The 2019 Lunar New Year event is almost here, so in today's video I'm going to run through everything you need to know to get ready for it. That includes the event's start time, what new skins and other cosmetics we can expect to be getting, the new map, and even some quick tips to help you get more event loot boxes, and thus more event legendaries. This is Master Ian Gamer, and let's get into it. So first up, we know that the event will be starting on January 24th, which is this coming Thursday, and as for the event's start time. Once again, Blizzard has not made any official comment on when it's going to be starting. However, based on the consistent start time of past Overwatch events, we can expect it to begin sometime around 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, with about an hour of leeway on either side. I'll show some other popular time zones on screen to help you out, but if you're in a different location than any of these, I'll include a link to a time zone converter down in the description. So be sure to check that out so you know when the event will be starting. Now, moving on to the new skins and costumes cosmetic items, at the time of me recording this, we've had four legendary skins revealed for the upcoming event. If you've somehow not seen those already, I'll include cards on screen to my videos where I cover all those new skins. Based off of what we've seen with all the year 3 Overwatch events so far, we can expect a total of six legendary skins and three epic skins, meaning that there are two legendaries and three epics we have yet to see. So far, the four skins revealed have all been referencing the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is a classic work of Chinese literature literature, so there's a pretty good chance that the remaining skins will somehow fit into that story as well. Moving on from the skins though, we can also expect a total of three emotes slash highlight intros. We can actually see what appears to be two new emotes in the event start date teasers we got last week, one being for Soldier 76 and the other for Ana. Now we don't know for sure that these are emotes, it is possible that they could also be highlight intros instead, but in my opinion they look more like emotes, so I'm gonna assume that's the case. And given that we usually get two of one and one of the other when it comes to emotes and highlight intros, I'm assuming that the last one we have yet to see will be a single highlight intro. We have no leads so far as for who will be getting this, but given that Sombra has been in the game for over two years now and has yet to get a single event highlight intro, I'm placing my bets on the highlight intro being for her. Moving on to the other cosmetics though, we can expect six new victory poses fitting within the fireworks theme which we've seen with the past years of this event, and also a handful of voice lines for various heroes, with Wrecking Ball, Ash, and Brigitte being guaranteed to get new voice lines since this will be their first time in the Lunar New Year event. These three heroes will also be getting new sprays, one being unique to their hero and the other one fitting within the Dragon Dance theme which all the other heroes have gotten so far. And last but not least, there will be a number of player icons added, with one for each of the new legendary skins and then a couple other more general ones to celebrate the event. Now moving on from cosmetics, we have the new map. It hasn't been officially verified by Blizzard that there will be a new map, but we can very clearly see it in the start date teasers I talked about that had the new emotes. Based on the map these take place on, it appears to be a nighttime version of Busan, which makes sense given that Busan is a control point map and the specific game mode for Lunar New Year is Capture the Flag, which often takes place on variants of the control point maps. Therefore, it makes sense that Blizzard would give Busan an event specific map reskin, as it would fit not only with the real world cultures that some celebrate the Lunar New Year, but also with the event-specific game mode. And speaking of Capture the Flag, we're almost certainly going to be seeing another competitive season of this game mode during this event. It'll run through the event's whole three and a half week duration, and will be a great alternative method for you to get competitive points outside of having to play normal competitive mode. Additionally, there are two new Capture the Flag based achievements, which actually are already in the game and can even be unlocked just by playing the current arcade version of Capture the Flag, however you can't actually get whatever spray is going to be associated with them just yet, as that of course won't be added until the event starts. And last but not least, some quick tips to help you guys get even more event legendaries is first of all to not play the arcade this week until the event starts on Thursday. Because if you wait until after the event starts, then the loot boxes you get from the arcade wins will be event loot boxes instead of normal ones. If you really want though, you can of course get a bit of a head start by getting two arcade wins before the event actually begins, and that way your first arcade win after that will net you a new loot box, and it will still be an event one, but that's two less arcade wins you have to get right off the bat before you can get your first box. Additionally, 
additionally, it seems like you're going to be able to get a total of four weeks worth of arcade loot boxes, given that the event is ending on February 18th. Now, depending on what time exactly the event ends on the 18th, it might actually turn out that you can get a fifth week of arcade wins if the event happens to end after the arcade resets on that Monday or Tuesday, depending on what time zone you're in. But I would just warn about being careful because it is entirely possible that it will end before the arcade resets. So if you're waiting to get some final last loot boxes before you spend credits on any of the skins you want, just be careful that you might run out of time. Which leads to my last point about getting legendaries, which is if you want to maximize the number of skins you end up getting with this event, don't buy any skins with credits until the very end of the event. Even if you really want one of the new legendaries in particular, there's always a chance that you could get it out of a loot box and then you'd save yourself 3,000 credits for not having to spend money on it. Granted, I know that a lot of people like to have the skins as soon as the event starts so they can actually use them during the event, and in that case it's really just up to you whether you're willing to spend the credits to have it early or if you're more conservative and willing to wait to see if you get it naturally out of a loot box. Either way, it's up to you, but that'll do it for everything you need to know for the upcoming 2019 Lunar New Year event. I will of course be keeping you guys up to date with all the new skin teasers as they come out over the next couple days, and once the event starts I will be doing a video covering all the new content in game, as well as a loot box opening video since you guys seem to really enjoy me doing those, and I gotta say they're pretty fun. So stay tuned for those coming soon, and otherwise let me know your thoughts about the upcoming Lunar New Year event by commenting down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and share it with a friend if you really liked it. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit up the bell to never miss any of my future Overwatch content. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great new year.